Hello everyone. Welcome back to the channel Physics Sergi. Uh, we are going to now present a problem which is the part two or the application part of the resolved seven video challenge that you were given already and uh, it involved the description of rotation viscometer and also a Rido problem of 1.333 in which uh, how Rido was writing the shear stress on that particular layer of cylindrical element as proportional to the angular velocity gradient. Okay, so all that explanation was already done. So in case you have missed out on it, so the link in the description for the resolved seven challenge, the rotation viscometer of Irido uh, book is presented and please do go through that. Okay, so what I have done here is whatever we have learned through in that particular video, I have tried to put it into application by uh, providing you with a question on those concepts. So Here's, I made a passage question followed by two questions so that we can cover up all the concepts in one particular problem itself. Okay, so if you want to try it out, I'll uh, just uh, go back and forth so that you can take a snapshot and try it out. Pause the video. You want to do it on your own, it's up to you, right? So, and I also will first of all read out the question here because it's in two pages and then I'll stop the video here so that you can pause and try it out. OK, so it, this will be real fun and this will actually test whether you have understood what I uh, presented in the actual resolved series video of the rotation viscometer from Erodo. So uh, here's the formal wording. Space between two coaxial thin long cylinders R and 2R is filled with Newtonian viscous liquid of coefficient of viscosity eta. So this is the top view of that. So there is a liquid in between and these two cylinders are actually rotatable and the liquids viscosity is talking about it as eta. Cylinders are maintained at constant angular speed omega naught but in opposite directions as shown in figure as you could see uh, one is in clockwise another is in anti-clockwise which is the main feature of the rotation viscometer where angular velocities of inner and outer cylinders would be different. Space is gravity free. Consider the flow of liquid in between cylinders is fully developed and steady. Let R equal to R naught is the cylindrical radial position at which angular motion of the viscous fluid elements is zero. That means you start from here to here, different positions will have different angular velocities. He's talking about one such position where the angular velocity could be zero. That he's representing for the question as R naught, okay? Uh, and P is the rate of heat generation in the whole system for unit length of the cylinder, right? So in order to maintain a viscous flow, there is a requirement of uh, power and that power also would be uh, at some rate dissipated in the steady flow. Let tau be the magnitude of torque of interaction due to viscous force between adjacent coaxial cylindrical layers of fluid at a distance r from the axis. So at any arbitrary distance small r, due two cylindrical layers touching each other would actually uh, have equal and opposite torques put upon each one of them. So <clears throat> that value as a function of r he's saying is tau. Okay. These forces between two adjacent layers form action reaction pair. <clears throat> and thus torque on these adjacent layers will also be equal but anti-parallel. So as I told you, take kinetic energy as kinetic energy of the fluid per unit element of the cylinder. So this symbol Ke would be used in the problem. You should realize that it is kinetic energy of the fluid per unit length. That's a very, very important part. Okay, so that's a description of the situation. <clears throat> these are the uh, two problems that you have to solve and based on whatever description that is given I borrowed the diagram so that you could still have a look at it. So uh, first question deals with four different options in which first one is talking about the torque comparison at two different positions. Second one is about angular velocity gradient in radial direction. Uh, at a distance r, he's saying it, it could be proportional to 1 by r cube or not. So you have to mark whether it's perfect or not. Then the value of r naught, which is the position where the fluid element remains uh, at rest or angular velocity of that is zero, that is being considered here. Okay, so which of these or uh, either of these or both of these could be. So these are all more than one correct type answers that you have to match. Similarly, marking the incorrect statements in the second one, right? Uh, power which was uh, generated right, due to heat dissipation inside this uh, entire fluid is talking about in terms of these two options. So which one is correct you have to judge 
and which one is incorrect you have to judge and kinetic energy ke per unit length that is described in the passage is it constant with time or decreasing with time that you have to judge or neither could be the answer okay so give it a fair try this is this is too many concepts at one particular place this type of questions do appear in je advance where they take a particular situation try to describe it properly and expect the student to make out their choices in a proper manner so it's really a 10 minute question i would say so try it out and then come back and go ahead with the solution okay so <clears throat> i would be assuming that you have watched the resolved 7 video on the rotation viscometer exp um, explanation and the link is in description below so you want to go ahead and do that so please make sure you pause the video here try to look at it or you can just follow this thing but it would be much better if you actually uh, try to go through that because some of the things would be uh, much faster here because i have spent more than 15 minutes in that video to explain the gist of it so i'll be only taking a gist here right so that's the advice so let's I, i'm assuming that you have watched it and let's go ahead so in the last video in that slide where we actually took a slice of a uh, liquid element so this is the top view and i have taken a cylindrical layer at a distance r and a width of dr okay right in that itself i have sliced out some part which can be thought of as some angular uh, element it's like a trapezoidal element can you see that this part at a distance r and a width radial width of dr i zoomed it into this diagram okay and because there is an angular velocity gradient and i already proved it in the resolved video uh, you could assume that this is r omega speed and this would be r plus dr but omega plus d omega also this omega won't be the same here and here so for a person who is sitting here as is familiar in the previous video you would be seeing that there is a relative velocity which twists this line or which shears that entire object by an angle d theta and that d theta is given by the ratio of this element by this element okay right and which in dt seconds this this would be the travel so i wrote d theta is that ratio of opposite by adjacent d theta by dt which is the shear strain rate would be this and that's how you end up getting that the shear stress is proportional to rate of strain and this is the definition we would be using which erodo directly gives in his question which we have proved in the previous video so this is the simple explanation for that so for more elaborate explanation please go into that video now um, that particular formula that i got in the previous uh, page i'll now utilize it here for the entire element now so the torque on either side should be zero uh, sorry torque on either side should be the same because until unless that is the case this won't be steady right if net torque on this is not zero you won't have a steady flow okay so what the, what the value of the, each of these torques should be written therefore as force applied on it which which can be written again as the stress multiplied by area of the stress remember this is a shear stress so you have to take the 2 pi rl area and then multiply it with r okay so this value c since the tau is the same throughout should be independent of r okay so this all these steps again are borrowed from that video itself so this step is familiar again d omega by dr when i substitute sigma and then equate it to this i end up getting this expression so one of the options in the first question which talks about the angular velocity gradient being proportional to 1 by r cube is a correct option there not only that i think the tau which is independent of r i think he was trying to compare it at two different positions right so not just at two different positions in any, any position the value of torque should be same so it was just a distraction to ask 4r by 3 and uh, 3r by 2 and all those things okay so it's c everywhere so those two options are sorted out in the first question then uh, the two way integration that we do is one is from the inner cylinder i have taken the clockwise sense as positive so that my function can take up all those values or limits so the inner cylinder was rotating with anti clockwise sense so he, uh, and outer cylinder was rotating with clockwise sense so uh, from minus omega not where the uh, radial distance is capital r inner cylinder radius to an arbitrary distance small r arbitrary angular velocity is written so this is general integral whereas the boundary integral is this one where i integrate this thing for the entire stuff that is from minus omega not of the inner cylinder to the plus omega not of the outer cylinder so capital r and 2r are substituted so the further steps you i think would be familiar with the first video is these things right so here <clears throat> you can go ahead 
and uh, divide these two to cancel off the C and then you end up getting this expression. Last time it was zero here. So there's a small change when you subtract, you get omega plus omega naught by here two omega naught on left hand side, right hand side, the cancellation yield this number. And now we are going to investigate at what place is omega zero and which is which is uh, interesting because uh, you start at anti-clockwise omega and as you move, it's a continuous function and you have to reach a clockwise omega. It's obvious that somewhere in between the layers have to reverse their velocity, angular velocity. So zero should exist at some place. But uh, saying it would happen at midpoint is wrong because d omega by dr is actually not a linear function. So this, this is what we'll end up getting and you just substitute omega is zero, rearrange and you'd get the that option. So the last option is correct in the first question. So not three R by two. So uh, two omega naught, whereas uh, this integral, you can further go ahead and solve it. Instead of dividing it with this, you can solve it and get the value of C, right? So the value of C, what C, C is nothing but the torque. Remember at the start, we wrote that, that C is a constant torque throughout, okay? So I have just represented the torque on each of the inner and outer cylinder. So inner cylinder, it, if it's rotating in anti-clockwise sense, torque will act clockwise. And for outer cylinder, if it's rotating clockwise, the torque will act anti-clockwise, okay? So the, these, this would be the value of the C that you end up getting. Now, the power that is required uh, to maintain this motion is equal to the power that is dissipated inside this fluid. So this is a master trick that you can use. He asked what is the power dissipated inside the fluid layers, but since it is a steady state, whatever power you are supplying to the cylinders via electricity or mechanical agent or whatever it is, I think that should be equal to the rate of power that is dissipated. So instead of going for the liquid calculation, I would uh, take an advantage of this idea and say whatever power mechanically or electrically or external agent wise is provided to inner and outer cylinder together, I think I should end up saying that itself is the value of P given in the question, okay? So this is C omega naught and this would be also C omega naught and therefore the total power, you should not forget two this time, should be two C omega naught. I'm just using uh, tau omega as the power. But I think he has power per unit length. So I just took P by L, L is gone here and this would be the correct answer, okay? So let's go back and mark the options for us ourselves now. So. In the first question, I think uh, we realized uh, because it's uh, correct statements that he's asking. I think the first one torque is equal at four R by three and uh, three R by two, or for that matter, anything in between R and two R it's equal. Magnitude of angular velocity gradient, I think we found definitely as proportional to one by R cube. That is also a correct answer. And I think the D option was the correct answer. So first one is answer is ABD. Mark the incorrect statement. So we, let's mark false statements first. I think we ended up getting this as false, this as true. And since it's study and it's pretty simple, okay, K, K is constant with time. This is something that you need to know or understand in a JE examination. Even if you don't solve the entire para paragraph uh, for partial marking in the more than one correct section. So I think the easiest options you should always mark and go ahead and arrive at that partial mark. I think this would have been the easiest one to mark out, okay? So out of these two, you would end up having um, constant with time is true statement. And I think this is a false statement. So he asks for false statements. So the false statement answers are A and D. So this is the correct key for it, right? So I hope you enjoyed the way the actual resolved video was presented. In case you have not yet watched it, I urge you, you watch that you will get a lot out of it because the description that was done in that resolved video, which is right now in the link uh, in the description below, uh, uh, used NCRT textbook basics. So it's a very good candidate for your JE advanced examination. So please do like, share and subscribe to my channel. I'll be coming up with more content before your JE mains and JE advanced exams. Okay, so thank you for watching and see you in the next video.